Yo, what's good, people? Izzy Max here, back again for the weekly breakdown. Uh, this will be week six for the Red Division. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by Ryan. Hey. And Johnny. Hi. Uh, this week is interesting. There's a lot of playoff uh, impl implications here, so we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. And first off, uh, you're just going to have me talking for a while. Uh, this is Ryan and Johnny. Uh, that should not say not plus six. Plus six. That should be negative one. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It should. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, I think it was a, a negative one plus one, wasn't it? Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. Uh, Ryan won with a negative one. It is fashion for Johnny to make his opponents win with negative differential. So, hey -o. Um, this game was really weird. You see on the teams, I'm just going to go straight to my notes because... There's a little more to talk about than what you see on this on the screen. Uh, the scarf Hitmonlee was super super good. Uh, it took Ryan a little while to realize that it was scarf, because uh, if he did, he would have just double protected earlier and it would have killed itself. Um, the pivot from ga for game two from Ryan was super super smart. Uh, he realized that the uh, Reggie steal, while it had a great matchup, it didn't match up well into the lead Johnny was using, um, which I thought was just super super smart. The Kangaskhan from Johnny. Um, really hit a lot of good calcs. It gets fantastic coverage, uh, and it's decently bulky, so it's just kind of sitting there uh, putting on tremendous pressure. And then finally, the biggest one here and why you see a negative one win for Ryan uh, was pretty much the last turn of the game. Uh, Johnny was in a prime spot to win, just needed two ancient powers. And for Ryan to end up winning the game, he needed either a crit flinch, uh, double crit or double flinch i believe and he ended up getting the crit flinch off of uh fiery wrath i think if he doesn't get one if he get, just gets the crit um i do believe uh johnny ends up winning if he just gets the flinch you kind of gotta have to see what would happen the next turn but the the double the crit flinch was just so unfortunate uh because it was just a, a well played back and forth uh, Johnny kind of swept game one, Ryan came back and pretty much did the same thing game two, and then game three was just a all-out slugfest that kind of came down to some unfortunate RNG, which you hate to see, but it was it was a great game overall. So uh, we'll go ahead and start with you, Ryan. What did you think of, of your own game? Uh, so fun fact, I actually did calcs for... Because when I, when I saw the Hitmonlee, I had actually already done calcs for plus two hit Monly come Fey into Reggie Steel. Um, so I was like, yeah, this close combat never kills. I live with the Bulldoze and the Steel Spike Oko is a max hit Monly if he chooses to max it. So then it was like helping hand reckless uh, high jump kick. And I was like, oh, fuck. Okay. Um, so that was a thing. Um, and then the game two, I thought I had a really good pivot. Game three, Johnny put me in a tough spot. Um, I feel like he def definitely could have won. I was banking on a double flinch should have gotten the win. Uh, if it had been double flinch, I also had a chance. Um, but luckily, Moltres decided to be a good bird this week. Because if you remember last week, Moltres was a bad bird and lost me both games for hacks. So I just thought it was trying to make me happy uh, and make up for oh, well. last week. Uh, no, it was it was a really good set. I mean, Johnny played crazy, crazy well, uh, and it was definitely tough, uh, especially that game one. I literally was like, well, I'm losing. Um, and to be totally honest, I spent more time on the damn song than I did the prep for the week. <laughs> well, hey, uh, yeah, no, that was a good set of matches. I mean. Uh, yeah, game one went really well for me. I mean, I, it, everything kind of happened how I wanted it, which was funny because our mutual friend Landon, uh, I was uh, comment uh, commentating on the whole entire match to him and explaining the mechanics of the game while playing. So I don't know if that helped. And then the second game, I got much quieter. I probably should have just kept talking or something. But uh, there was this really vital moment in game two where uh, I think it was even turn one, which is such a testament to like how your lead and like the first turn of the game determines the rest of it. But I maxed my Kang and I had thought that um, you're taking like a, I think it was a close combat. I thought that was such an obvious, like 
he'd think, oh, okay, uh, he's going to protect, you know, because I was wide open, right? So I ended up attacking with Kangaskhan because I thought he would double into the Hitmonlee. And uh, yeah, that's not how that went. So I ended up taking a big hit. And of course, Kangaskhan, I, th I think everyone read that uh, I forgot to hyper train it. So I don't think it made that much of a difference, but um, definitely its stats were a little bit weaker there. So my apologies to everybody. I wasn't at my best, I guess. That was the only mine I forgot to hyper train though. But uh, yeah, no, that first turn where I was being a little too meta, if you will, um, uh, did not work out for me and it just kind of went downhill. But game three was uh, crazy, you know, and I think the biggest thing was the rock berry on uh, Moltres. I mean, that was huge. I mean, when I saw that, I said, um, well, after, of course, the flinch and stuff, I said, yeah, there's no way I'm, I'm going to bring this in unless I get like a, a crit and Ryan falls asleep at the controller and we time out or something, you know. But uh, yeah, no, great set of matches. Yeah, no, it was a it was a good set overall. Um, again, this is not a plus six. It was very very close. Um, moving <laughs> on, it's just going to be you two. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah, um, this was an interesting set uh, for sure. The we see Maxwell bringing mostly his standard core. I'd say this is kind of the core of his team, and then a sand slash. We see Hector bringing. Um, First off, he brings both tier 1s, which I was like, thank the lord. Uh, he brought his Zard and his Aleki. He brought the Klefki, um, Aerodactyl, Duraludon, Vaporeon. I kind of think this is like one of the strongest versions of Hector's team he's ever brought to a match, and he did pull the win with a plus 1. Uh, but we'll kind of get into the game here on this next slide. Johnny, why don't you start? Yeah, so, um, yeah, overall, I mean, I thought Hector had such a really great matchup, and I think I mentioned that somewhere on my notes, but, um, I mean, looking at the team, that that definitely is, I agree, that it's, uh, it's such a strong version of his team. I mean, it's really tight in terms of types and all that. Um, but, uh, yeah, Maxwell, uh, his Sand Slash, which, of course, it's a lower tier mon, but, I mean, it does really great work. And, I mean, the combination of that and uh, his Tang Growth, has such momentum stopping power, I thought. I think that was game two, I want to say, where they were on the field and Sand Slash was maxed. And, I mean, it was it was just kind of tough for Hector's team to, like, you know, break through that because they're such big, bulky threats. Uh, of course, Gigalith was uh, still taking big hits. I mean, I, I mean, again, Maxwell just brought such bulky things this week. But, um, yeah, I mean, Hector had the good matchup overall, but especially in game three it ended up working out really well for him because i feel like a lot of game three maxwell was on the back foot in terms of typing i mean even from like the first uh um uh first turn but um yeah i mean as it went on i mean it uh it ended up uh, coming out with the w for uh hector but man i really i i think it really sealed the deal with the weakness policy uh policy vaporeon you know you get to the final turns and then you're like okay i'm gonna hit this vapor Orion, and then it reveals its weakness policy and you say okay yeah that, that that's where i lose um and then of course the charge are i mean that residual damage from the uh, or i guess the damage from the wildfire I mean, really did a lot of great work so um i really like the bring from uh, hector this week i mean it, it, was, it was good stuff so what do you have ryan um, I really like that Hector did not hit the Gigalith for super effective damage until he had the guaranteed kill. Because um, if you were weakness policy, Maxwell, that would have just auto won you the game on the spot. And he knew that. Um, so I was really like, like, that was some high level play. Like the fact that he's game one and he doesn't know what your Gigalith has. So him choosing consciously to not hit you with the super effective until he knew he had the kill was really, really, really smart. Um, the Clef Zard lead is something I've been wondering if we'd see from him at any point. Um, and especially with, um, he had really good, like, super effective berries. Like, the Shuka Berry and the Chardy, Chardy Berry were well placed. Like, I was really surprised when that Charizard lived on, like, 36 HP after it got hit with the Max Rockfall after the Reflect was up. I was like, holy crap. Uh, I liked the Max Sand Slash. That was really cool. Uh, we were glad to see it. You don't have it anymore, but it was cool. Um, Maxwell pretty much won his second set off of really good, a really good switch turn one. And his positioning that set was just like incredible. Like he just nailed the positioning. 
Um, I thought Hector pivoted into game three really well. And the Gigalith Max was pretty solid and definitely kept things in the running. Uh, one thing with uh, Hector's team that I really have to compliment him on was I felt like when I was watching him play, I was like, I feel like this is like some of the best prep I've seen from him. Uh, the prep was really on point. Um, and he's used he used a lot of his tools really, really well. And I think there were some intentional choices I liked, like the fact that his Klefki was not air balloon or focus sash or anything like that. The fact that it was basically just dying in one hit works out pretty well for Hector with what he brought, because he kind of wants that thing to get off the field so he can get something else in. He wants it to click reflect and sunny day and then get a go away. Um, and that really actually worked out for him in all the games, which I really respect when you when you tech something essentially to be a sack like that and operate in that role. I think it's really cool. Um, and I thought he did a really nice job this set. So huge. Great job to him. That was a really impressive showing. Yeah, no, it really was. Uh, that was some of the strongest play I've seen him play. Um, on the other end, you guys didn't bring it up because it didn't hit the field. But uh, I actually did end up bringing a choice band full special attack uh Dracovish. Yeah, um, it never hit the field, so I didn't get to say anything. Also, oh. there was a lot of my mons that just weren't optimized. Um I pretty much have a lock for playoffs, so I wasn't I was trying some more awkward and weird things. Uh because Sand Slash shouldn't probably have never been on the plan, like it did a lot of work. Um, but it probably shouldn't have been there. Uh there was just a lot of things that I should have done that I didn't just for the sake of having fun and not doing it, but Hector played the best game I've seen him play. Uh, even with me not being completely optimized, I still played the game extremely well and competitively, and he really did have uh, checks for a lot of the things that I had. Um, and just the weakness policy of Aporion, who expects that? Uh, even if I was playing at a full potential team, that still would have thrown me off and probably would have still won him a game or two. So just kudos to Hector. He played really, really well. One of you guys had something to say. I think that's all. I just agree. Oh, okay. I think that was Hector's yeah, best out of yeah. the season. And then moving on to this last one, Johnny, why don't you go ahead and break down these teams? Yeah, so we got Grant versus Burst here. And, I mean, um, just right off the bat, I mean, gosh, Grant's team is so scary. I mean, it's got it, it's so tight in terms of typing. And, I mean, you know, of course, the Landorus, we all shake in our boots when we see that. Um, and then on Burst's end, I mean, we, we see a lot of utility, right? When I see this, because uh, the biggest thing is like the Jellicent. So um, a, a great matchup against the Landorus, because of course, Strength Sap. And then we've got N Naganadel coming in with a huge hitter against a lot of these um, foes here. Because like Azumarill and Jolteon and um, Nine uh, Ninetales there are pretty frail. So in terms of the matchup here, I mean, it looks a little bit more for Burst, but I mean, there's a ton of offensive pressure from Grant over there. So, um, I mean, just a lot of, uh, uh, when, when you look at this, it kind of looks like uh, if Grant brings like good positioning, um, he's in pretty in, in the clear. But I mean, from Burst, I mean, there's a lot of, when I when I see that team, especially the Morgrim and the Talon Flame, I'm like, okay, well, we're in for a, a fun game. For sure. Moving on. I'll go ahead and take my notes first. Um, the Mesprit here put in a lot of work. I know a lot of people don't really think highly of Mesprit as an offensive option, um, but the amount of moves it gets and the decent uh, attacking stats, it really did put in a lot of work. It had a lot of coverage for the Mons, uh, which will kind of come in here a little bit later. I think the, the solo light screen... Um, from burst was just super super smart there's not a lot on grant's team who really hits on the physical side i mean you do have the azumarill but it's probably slower than everything you have and then you already had checks for the landorus so I, I do think the light screen was super super smart uh the freeze on the venusaur was unfortunate however i don't think it changed the outcome i just think it changed the differential maybe saving burst two points uh because it was a speed tie i believe uh from watching with the uh mesprit so it would have uh, killed something, got the top policy off, killed another thing, but then died to the Naganadel in the back. And then uh, the Max Phantasm from the Jolteon, I think, was super smart. Um, there was just some positioning things um, that kind of 
were a little bit weird positioning and targeting. So the Max Phantasm in game two was really, really good because you have a strong physical attacker in Landorus in the back. However, I think you targeted a little bit wrong because you knew the Mesprit had Ice Beam. Um, so you really needed to get that thing off the field. And uh, you didn't really know what kind of moves was on the Naganadel because it only came to that, that game two. You didn't get to see it in game one. Uh, but knowing that the Mesprit had Ice Beam and knowing that it had a uh, Airstream boost, you probably needed to get that thing off the field first. Um, but other than that, I think it was solid play. The Mesprit, uh, again, just doing so much work. I think this is this is kind of a trend for Grant when you see a Mon that you don't really like see on ladder at all or uh, doing anything in any like popular draft leagues, uh, he kind of gets thrown off by it. Which, fair, I would have as well, seeing how uh, techy that thing was. So, uh, yeah, I think just the positioning from Burst was super, super good. Grant uh, did pivot decently well in game two, but I just think the, the offensive options that Burst had this week was just way too much. Right, agree. And um, I think that's a thing to piggyback off of the, uh, uh, the Landorus uh, comments. And I think we all wrote that. I know I just pasted my notes in without looking at your guys's but um yeah i mean uh the biggest thing with landorus and then i mean a lot of like tech moves you know luckily we don't i think there was like a a topic in the chat about hidden power and how, how like i mean i think it was a great uh, thing that they got rid of it because i mean like it could be so random sometimes you'd get oh, like yeah, a, it was you know, bullshit. <laughs> yeah like a hidden power rock from like a jolteon or something or it, it, i mean just like out in nowhere you'd be screwed you know but i mean uh yeah the biggest thing for me is uh, uh scoping with uh, uh it, like in, especially with the landerus with the four times weakness to ice because i mean that thing is just a magnet for ice type moves and um just a, a, yeah i'd like to see a little bit more scoping on grant's end um and you know of course that's hard to do sometimes but it definitely with like a landerus or something that has a four times weakness you never know what mon is going to uh, be carrying one of those super effective moves and I mean, of course, you can know the move sets, but I mean, you know, the person may not bring it, right? So having that protect, you know, just doing that the first turn or something like that um, is really, really useful. So you don't, you know, get surprised. Um, Ryan, what were your thoughts on the Landris before I continue? <clears throat> yeah. I saw that was your second point there, yeah. Yeah, so I've run Keytran in the past, which um, for two leagues in a row, and it has a 4x weakness to ground. And the first thing I, I would do every week is I would go onto Serebii and I would type in what, and I would control F ground for every bond on the opponent's team. Um, you have to do that. If you're running something like a Landorus, anything that has a 4x weakness, um, because you need to know, can I live these hits? Um, because you, uh, Grant was also not very careful with his Landorus and the set he played against me. Um, he maxed it in front of a Frostlass, which if I was a life orb Frostlass, I would have Okoed him. And I still could have Okoed him with an Ice Beam if I had gotten a good roll. Um, which is just the kind of, like, you, you have to be so careful with, the, with that kind of a mod. Um, and I actually think the Landorus lead has been hurting him more than it's been helping him. Uh, because I've seen him lead, like, Musharna Azu and Musharna Landorus multiple weeks in a row. And I know for a fact Burst does, like, research on his opponents before he plays them. I think that not only do you have to be a little bit more careful with the Landorus, but varying those leads a bit. Um, because that's why the Morgrim put in so much work, is because, like... Grant's team is really, really good, but I see the same like six mons every week and the sets are similar at this point. So I feel like a lot of this really commanding win off burst really just boils down to the fact that he was like, yeah, he's not going to lead Sun <laughs> or he's not going to lead some this thing that can beat my lead because Grant's leads have been very consistently the same week in and week out. So I think that's one of the biggest problems, uh, which I'll get, I'll finish my notes later. Uh, Johnny, go, keep going. Right, right, right. So, yeah, and, you know, I think uh, Grant uh, prepped really well, and he played, you know, pretty well. I mean, gosh, it's uh, it's such a strong team, and he's got a lot of really great tools. Um, but, like, for instance, I mean, like, um, I know uh, Burst in his video made a comment about the Ninetales being kind of 
it's like, oh, it's got a sash on it. But I thought like, you know, uh, and that's just one example of the prep that Grant did that was, you know, pretty solid. Um, that uh, the sash on the nine tails, I mean, since it's such a frail mon, that it's, you know, it's gonna be a magnet for hits. So um, I thought the sash over like the heat rock was a really nice thing, especially in the Dynamax format. But anywho, um, yeah, of course we all mentioned the freeze thing, how that was unfortunate, but good for differential. And of course, Burst does say that that was a mis uh, misplay. Um, you know, if he went for Psychic, it would have been kind of a done deal there. Um, and then, uh, you know, otherwise I really liked uh, Burst's uh, flexibility in this match. And, and, you know, like I said, from the beginning, uh, when we looked at the team preview, I mean, uh, Morgrim put in really good work and there wasn't much that, um, I mean, unless there was like a max, right? Um, but otherwise there wasn't much defense against a fake out. I mean, it was just kind of a free turn if it, if uh, Burst got it off. So, I mean, really great showing from uh, Burst's end with uh, the, the kind of tricky moves, you know? So go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, um, so mo I'm not going to repeat myself a whole lot. Um, I was wondering if there was a psychic move on Musharna. I was assuming there was, um, just for the Nagandel, because uh, I saw a Dazzling Gleam come out at one point, and I was like, I feel like I want to see a something else. I really liked the Jolteon Max. Um, it was tankier than I thought it'd be. When I saw that Nagandel Max, I was like, oh yeah, Jolteon's dead, and then it wasn't, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, Phantasm was a great tech. I really liked it. Um, he Maxwell was correct on the targeting there, but it was it was absolutely the right bring to bring the sh uh, Shadow Ball Phantasm. Um, Weather Ball is something w on that Jolteon you should probably experiment with, because in this set he hailstormed. You you run into a lot of situations where your opponent has hailstormed you um, in your weeks, and all of a sudden that gives your Jolteon ice coverage. Um, or if you use your Jolteon um, offensively, one of your new varied lead options could be leading Ninetales Jolteon and having Jolteon Max Flare something down or having your Venu lead with the Ninetales and do it too. But like there, the, a Weather Ball tech is actually something I think you should look into um, because I think part of your issue is actually running into limited coverage options. Um, some of your team doesn't have those coverage options you want and i just love to see some lower tiers come out man like you've got like that team has some of the best low tiers in the entire league and i've seen drampo like once and i want to see it more uh, um on that on that point real quick one mon that we haven't seen since i think week two against or week three against me sableye yeah and sableye was really really good here um priority will-o-wisp was Quash. so good into his team Quash was really good into this team. Um, you can't fake it out, so that kind of prevents the Morgrim um, from being a, a really good lead option for Burst. I mean, it doesn't, like, invalidate it, but it makes it harder for Burst to lead it. Sableye Landorus would have been a great lead. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that, honestly, I feel like, personally speaking, I almost never would lead my 4X Weakmon. I almost never led Heatran, and it was my kill leader last season. I would get myself in a situation in the beginning of a game where Heatran could come in in the mid game Dynamax and then sweep from there. If you're working with like a 4X weak Dynamax threat like Landorus or Heatran, you need to make sure that your opponent can't just lead and beat those mons. Um, and you need to make sure you have a nice plan for if something in the back can beat that mon. You know, that's... It, it, it's very tricky to work with a mon like that. Um, there, it's very powerful, but you have to be just so careful. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, that's our last game of the week. Uh, this is relatively short. Uh, next week is the last week of conference play. Uh, again, another super, super important week. Um, so without further ado, you guys got any uh, closing thoughts? Yeah, this was a great week. Um, good week for the Red Division. Uh, great games solid play all around um and next week's like very important and very tight so yeah yeah great week of play and i mean good stuff you know i don't have a joke this week i gotta write some more but uh yeah <laughs> other than that um yeah with the giveaway stuff uh i'm doing a live stream at some point this week to give away week five and then we get into the craziness which is week seven so if you guys are out there and you want that shiny larvitar for the lowest differential in the league you still have another week to throw your games um other than that i mean great play i'm really excited to see the end of the divisional 
um, uh, weeks here coming up. I mean, that's going to be super exciting. And then once we get into the cross week stuff or uh, inter divisional, whatever we call that, whatever term yeah. we want to use, dude, I'm, I'm stoked. That's going to be awesome, you know? So anyway, that's all I got. For sure. So without further ado, guys, we will see you in the next one. Peace.